and letting it slip away from you. you know? You're absolutely crushed up. Anyway, looking at the overall rankings, it is getting very spooky for some of these teams. But, oh. I mean, the Infinity, extremely happy with that last game. If they didn't get the result that they did with third place, it was looking nightmarish for them. But 122 points, they're three points ahead of 11th place. They're not quite on the bubble anymore. But there are three teams, Box Gaming, Team Queso, Mad Balls, 99, 100, 100. All these teams gunning to get themselves out of the survival bracket. I mean, it is one hell of a day here. Uh, and all these teams do not want to be going home without getting into those further stages. But someone has to go home, John, and five of them will be. Uh, Again, though, it is hard. We're not getting to a point where any of these teams are confirmed out as of yet, other than, I would say, maybe R8, who have really got a tough time ahead of them if they'd like to jump up over these teams towards 12th and 11th. Yeah, they need to outperform uh, five other teams from, from this point onwards by kind of crazy averages. The, the likelihood that that happens is just... It, it's kind of down the drain at this point, Blank. It, it's not great. But for those teams a little bit further up, it will be a single chicken dinner that can make all the difference. And the question is, how can the other teams stand up to it? It's all about consistency at this stage for the teams already in. And you need that pop off if you lower down the tables. Match 20 right now. Only four matches after this one. John, it's gone so quick. We're here. Wow. At the end of Group Red. Uh, maybe we'll see some of these guys further into the future. I'm sure we will, in fact. But we will have to wait a little while longer once Group Red uh, concludes. You know what, John? I'm going to miss these guys. I'm going to miss these guys for a little bit. But obviously, Group Green coming up next, one of the scariest lobbies. So make sure you stick around for week two because that should be some good fun over on that side. We'll have more action coming your way, including all the... Honestly, right, okay, I, I checked on the PUBG Mobile Esports channel last night and there is some real cool, cool content being put out. So if you're missing out on some of that, surely go check that out at the same time because everything's kicking off, including LGD versus Influence came in. What is going on here? This, this is one hell of an engagement. I mean, sure, why not have a, an engagement between two of the top three teams going in right at the start of the game? Blank, LGD have had two players drop. Influence Kemen. Into flag a little bit. They've been flushed twice. Another player gets knocked. MVM looks for more challenge against Koyovsky. The rest are coming through as well as MVM playing forward guard against it. Koyovsky around the door frame, back and forth. Will not have access to Suki just yet. Maybe looking for a flush, but MVM around the door frame as the teammates get brought back into the fray. There's three players there's there. Finds one. There's, a, there's the first block for Koyovsky to keep them in. Spray down the alleyway, and it's not quite good. The lineup might have been there. But Influence came in full and LGD pick up four points. S2G shaking and crying at the club right now. Dude, this is a hot drop from LGD. On L as a half, Influence came in. What has happened? Why would they do this? Why wouldn't they do this? I mean, it's last day, LGD. They're not comfortable. S2G, 182 points behind them. Like, that's 10 points that puts between them and fourth place. And 60k? How, this is an, this is a very dangerous play to make versus the best team in the lobby. That is confidence, all right? LGD is just like, look, influence came in. You're having a bad day, no matter how we put it. We knock your final member over on our angle. We ensure you don't get that snake play towards the end of the game. And now we're going to hot drop you in El Azahar. I am astonished by what I'm well, seeing. Well, let's not only talk about the third place. Let's talk about second place as well, because... If LGD finish out with a good game, we could see what happened with BTR last game as well, right? This is obviously if LGD have a good game, and there's still a long way to go in this after the hot drop. We're four minutes in, and one of the best teams in the lobby has been wiped out clean, right? Yeah. That's kind of crazy. But they could absolutely put a hole in that gap, right? At the moment, uh, it was sitting towards, what is that, 40... Uh, I want to say 49 points, but, you know, I could, could always be wrong. That has happened before. Uh, 49 <laughs> points between these two teams. So if you put a 20-point gap in there, all of a sudden it becomes a little bit more possible. However, there aren't that many games left. And at this stage, a 40-point gap is most likely going to be good enough uh, to hold off mm. pretty much anyone. Unless you go down in 16th place. True. In which case... Every single point you get above this team is profit from now on. They have zero eliminations. They're not getting to the end game. I mean, we talk a lot about at times of catching a team up and we're always like, oh, well, you have to profit over every point that they get in each match. 
Pro GD to get the second place and secure themselves towards the top side, they have to drop an influence, Kevin. I mean, I would love to get an interview with LGD. I would love to know what's going through their mind making this play. Uh, but again, that is a confidence booster. Taking it on influence, Kevin, arguably, I, I want to say the best team in the lobby, but Budaram really have put on a, a showstopper yeah. for us. Uh, and I think they definitely deserve that title at the moment, even with them being in first place, right? It is incredible to watch. And LGD currently have the best results over on Miramar. I mean, they bring their Sunnies, they bring their SPF, they've got their Parasols. They're feeling comfy on this map at the moment. And they're just showing exactly how relaxed they are right now. Very, very cool. I mean, Potion Seller Maxman has been brewing up those uh, pots for LGD. Only the strongest potions, apparently, for Miramar to go into battle. Top five rate, LGD. Going to be uh, bumping influence Kevin's rates down quite a bit uh, with this game as well. Of course, Miramar, uh, the number of Miramars played is, is fairly low. Uh, I think we get, what, two a day, right? So, so far, we will have seen six over the last three days. This will be the seventh map, which means that three of the six games, influence Kevin have finished top five. This will not be another one of them. A quick replay on this one, and why not? I mean, Suki takes a dangerous shot there, but I think that damage that he was able to do onto Law before he goes down was super, uh, super important, right? If you're able to get a little bit of damage before you go down, yes, it's not a refrag, but it's valuable damage done. And just a couple of shots, in fact, one shot from an M4 will do the trick. And with the fact that you're able to only shoot off maybe one of those shells every, like, half a second or so with the DBS uh, compared to an M4 that just shoots out 30 bullets at the speed of light, essentially. You're likely to get one of those shots off just on a glancing blow round the corner onto one of those players. Very important that Suki doesn't go down immediately. I mean, LGD are just... I, I don't know. Man. I don't even know how to put it. This is... That was such a cool start to our game. And I mean, in PMGC, yeah. this is where it's at. This is where these hot drops happen and where they find success. Team Queso out inside the blue. They're trying to make their way in. They are behind four rivals and LGD are moving up as well. You can see the focus coming through from Ayala right now. Look at this guy. He is just <laughs> locked into the game. He is in a different world right now. He is literally on the sands of Miramar inside his mind. I mean, you're they playing, know how important these games are to them. You're playing on a bike on the undulations of Miramar. You do need to be focused. It's not the easiest place to navigate on the two wheels. Those tilts and turns can really throw you for a loop if you're not careful. What an interesting way to end Group Red. I think I think it would be very tough to match the excitement that we have found here in PMGC in Group Red. You know, I was I was checking out Twitter, I was checking out the old Insta, and I think there there were a lot of people saying that, you know, they didn't realize how much they would enjoy this new format of PMGC, but how much they are in fact enjoying it. It is just three mini tournaments to the death over three weeks. It is the best way to play at our PMGC. And there's still chances for a lot of these teams, even if you do, do go down in like 14th place, there's still chances in the future with last chance with a survival stage. Um, so it's all, not all over these teams as we go down. So even if your favorite team goes down in 11th place, you know you'll still see them in the future and you know that they deserve to be still seen in the future. Alas, it is a little bit more of a tough stage to get into it. But again, this is what it's all about. You see our best teams rise towards the top, find their way towards the grand finals, and there they'll be waiting for the rest of the teams to come along and join the group. Those south hills of Chumasaro right now, prime real estate. Everybody should be looking to figure out if they can get a position there. We've seen circles like this before come down to just who could get into these, uh, these hills first and get there early. Mtech Storm a little bit further south. So Chumacera is entirely encompassed in this next circle blank. Teams will be moving in this way. I love that the DRS fam as well. I mean, we love you guys for supporting your team the way that you do on these audience predictions. Um, but I love that even some of the DRS fam are currently actually voting for LGD right now on Miramax. <laughs> they're like, look, they're pretty good on Miramax. We, did just we see can't that. deny that. We did just see that, right? That's what they're, they're, they're using their eyes. And then telling their brains what to do. It's it's fantastic to see. Again, 
we love that there's so much support coming through for yeah. some of these teams and you know the Nepali fans are always some of the most vocal and some of the most exciting fans to engage with as well so we appreciate you guys as well supporting DRS unfortunately dropping down behind Beta at the moment though I think that they could hit some good games today potentially um, I don't think they're ever out of the running though. They're always a consistent for every single one of the engagements. I think if you look at their top five percentage, it's going to be pretty large for our overalls on all maps. Um, they're an exciting team to watch. I don't think they've quite figured out um, their team engagements as of yet, or not exactly putting themselves in that position to go for those team engagements too many times. Uh, I think once they get that confidence on board, we'll see a real different DRS. And I think they've got a lot of time between now and getting towards that survival stage. Should they drop into the survival stage of course there's still a chance for them to jump up into third place if they really play their cards right um again what a wonderful way to start out our pmgc with group bread so many exciting storylines to talk about here there's a lot of dynamics going on in this lobby in the meantime whilst we've been nestering away nick mcgalaxy in the southwest hills have got a very wide spread titan have managed to sequester themselves over near minas de Valle. Buriram as well have swung around all the way to the south side. DRS a little bit slow to push in, maybe a little bit further east of Buriram. And LGD still very much out in the zone near Los Leones at this stage. And they'll have to push further through. Difficult part of the map to play. And we've seen this area a fair few times throughout the entirety of Group Red at the moment. And shifting over towards this western side. Ooh. Very difficult to play. Huge valleys at the moment. And Mad Balls have a position here where they could move up towards one of those strong compounds at the top of the mountain itself to the north side of Via de Mar. See if they take that one up. But Adam also have to fight through a lot of open ground at the moment. Again, it's that valley that BTR are currently stuck within towards the middle. It's a little bit difficult to play within. S2G coming in from the north side. Looking to make their mark during this game. Obviously, second best team here on Miramar. Looking to pump up those numbers and with four players, not many too not too many early engagements for them either. They're looking set and ready to make something happen, but it looks like they will be directly in contest with BTR as Hamzy G sails past towards the compound on the lower end of the ridge. Nick McGalaxy with two teams very close by. Bigatron in the meantime. Combat four rivals close by on the compound. Liquid low. Voki wants to step out for it. A fourth four rival player comes into the fold. Bigatron do have all four alive, but they have one player playing on the opposite side of the road. Luxy as that long range specialist. They got XI8 rolling up into the spike. Ghost could potentially be massive at taking down Zuxi's position. Reposition good from Zuxi as Jen Foster steps out for the flush. Ghost thinks better of going in for this engagement and actually sends back towards the rest of the team as Jen Foster falls for Bigatron on the front, but the rest of four rivals can't really afford to commit for this push. Luxy has such a great suppressive position to stop them oh. from really doing too much at all. Yeah, Zuxi's just dropping the smokes where he can to deny sight lines, allow that res to come through. But in the meantime, I8 dropped down towards this way, and this is what, exactly why Ghost moved back up, because Buriram spotted them leaving, and then immediately sent for their compound. Fortunately, they've lost one of their players in Tiger, looking to get a bit further. That's a nice nade from Boki. Does not do the damage he was looking for, though. Both of these fights really starting to pop off. Aegon XA8 suffering heavily against Buriram now, but they do manage to get trades when they're looking for them, squeaking it out. But there's only one player remaining, and it won't be quite enough. Buriram eliminated, so they won't be able to extend their lead against Influence Kemen. Not going to be too happy about that, but Bigatron now back into the fight. Zuxi pushed out, looking to get flushed by Benburu, Benburu, but it doesn't quite go through. Will have to step out again, exposed to the off angle. Luxy still looking to just try and slow things down, control this fight, and Silas weighs in as well, with the rest of S2G in tow. Look at a pep pepper those shots down, and Jen Foster will fall to boot. Bigatron, they've taken just a little bit too long with this fight, and they are suffering because of it. I mean, Liquid at this point in time needs to go into full survival mode and try and pick his teammates up. Luxy trying his best to remove players. Lord stays on the top side for a little bit too long and gets knocked by a nasty one, but that's not the team that is actually dealing you the most amount of damage. S2G takes a little bit of damage as well in the meantime. BTR have to bring their players back up to fold. Zuxi back up at full HP. Luxy's been doing a great job to hold down these sight lines, hold down the doors so there can't be any runouts coming through from four rivals. He has really been crucial this engagement not going south for BTR at the moment. A cornerstone 
or the squad a linchpin, and this is exactly what you want to see, a revitalized Luxie. Pumping back into the lobby. Doing so much work for the team. Jen Foster enabled, but not going to be able to find the shots over towards Voki. The rest of the team moving through, but Liquid has felled as well. And Luxie, Ooh, Luxie again Luxie. comes in with a crucial launcher. He keeps everybody alive, can roll across the road as long as S2G don't take it down. Can he make the cross? Gets to safety behind the wall and into the compound. Still has to make a little tricky dash and goes down. Oh! S2G plays spoiler. And it looked so hopeful there for Bigatron to stay alive. Luxy did so much work, but that's the end of their run. And S2G curtail them. They clip their wings and Bigatron denied the flight. So difficult that I mean Luxy makes all the right plays in all the right places to make sure that BTR can maybe take the engagement for rivals. Even sends himself towards the backside of the building on the wall to deny the sidelines from S2G. But Kalsi again, this guy is unbelievable when it comes to those sprays. And Tech Storm taking a fight against the Infinity. The Infinity, remember, not safe as of yet. 122 points. Nick Galaxy behind them, 119. But hot on their heels are all the teams down towards that bottom five. All on around about 100 points as well is pretty terrifying. M Tech Storm, Armin, gets himself back up to full HP with the help of his teammate. Now look to get back into the mix. Tizzy. Front position here, looking over towards these players. That might be a decent name, but doesn't find shots over towards Mella. But all right, getting involved. Takes down Logan. That east side really starting to heat up. Tunny low. Time ticking away. Can R8 move in and play on this edge side? The tournament fairly close to being over at this stage blank. Still looking to take the fight. Amen goes down. Tizzy gets the shots off onto Mella. The Infinity, they're left down at one. Just Newsy with the AUG. Certainly a powerful weapon in the right hands. But R8 still looking to spoil MTech Storm's run. I mean, either way, this is just sucking up points from the bottom of the lobby because R8 not really going to be able to challenge too much at the moment. See how much further they can get, but. Denying the chance of the Infinity, doing a lot of damage over towards MTEC Storm, currently at 86 points and 15th, would like to ladder up a little bit more, but R8 just spoiling a lot of chances at the moment as they move through. SK Ton does a little bit more damage, but there is return Ooh. fire. MTEC Storm holding out, only one player of theirs is now down on the floor. They're looking for more knocks and they leave one player alive for R8. Oh, hang on a minute, there's two. Prestige is still active, Bandar on the back lines. The floor strewn with kneeling players. Zemtech Storm playing with two. Tizzy crawling back and away. Bandar wants to try and stab in the back. Will be able to find one, but it is traded effectively. Chicken with the DBS now against Prestige. A one versus one to stay alive for both teams. And it's actually R8 who are able to cinch it out. Two players there. And they will be able to get both of these reses fast and move in to the next zone. R8 take down Zemtech Storm. Back up us four as well. Very well done. I mean, R8 ruining massively the chance of the Infinity as Mtech Storm there, which opens things up a little bit for Mad Bulls. Next circle pops on our screen down towards the valley. A horrible circle for a lot of these teams to play and getting off this mountainside towards the west as well as down towards the southeast. Going to be difficult. I8 on the other hand going against one of the top team, the top team of the lobby of Budodan being able to hold that one out. They found themselves a real good chunk of land here to play around with just across the road and on the road that heads down from Chumacera. Titan. He's one of their players against DRS. 165 on the totals for DRS with the elimination added on that'll be 166. Want to try and rack up as many as they can to close that gap between that third place spot. Team Queso, who have been on a mad one on the run, face off against Nigma Galaxy and are not having the best time of it at all. Scream does manage to get the heal off. Papi Potro sends back, but a knock onto Scream leaves Papi Potro all on his lonesome. Spotted out by Silas. I think there was an S2G elimination coming through there for the final one. Papi Potro falls. Team Queso. They do not convert on a brilliant game from last time.
but Mad Balls are making their way up. Skills has takes a ton of damage. Now looking to take down Nigma Galaxy, who are currently ahead of them in the rankings, 11th place on that bubble. Three eliminations will sit them tied with the Infinity in 10th place. They've got zero eliminations as well. Now Mad Balls would love to find a little bit more on this game. They're looking down towards S2G, across towards Nigma Galaxy. We're now leaving. They can take down this team. It opens up the doors, opens up the gates for maybe Mad Balls to send on through. The horns have been pretty blunt for the entirety of this tournament, and you're worried for them slightly. Team Kato also going down off the back of a very good match on her angle. It's so unfortunate for them. Two Nygma Galaxy as well. Fox trying to hold down this ridge line on their chase. And all right, have been ruining the day of everyone at the bottom of the table so far. SK Ton and Band are full, but Trismay lost on the back. Should be flushed out. They're just going through all of them. You're right. Fox are trapped on the outside. Neores are slowing them down from the south side. R8 peppering away from the north edge. And both of those reses are available. Prestige, sure, he's on the off angle there. But it's just break and so as for Box. Can they find their way further through? So amusing to watch R8 take down M Tech Storm. Take the Infinity down to one player. Now even taking shots towards Box Gaming. If they're going down, all the bottom five teams are going down with them, it seems. The next circle comes through, and it's in the middle, right in the middle. A big old donut circle there. R8 trying to hold on that north side. Effect in the blue. Nightmarish spot right now for Mad Balls. They have to make their way down the hill. I mean, at this point in time, it's just a case of dropping in those vehicles and finding a spot on the roadside. But LGD will see their approach. Nick, but Galaxy and S2G also have some points of over overpass here on that top side. We'll be able to look down towards them. This is pretty brutal. Ninth place. You go down here. Not many points at all. A lot of risky situations being brought to bear. Seven eliminations for R8. I mean, we have seen some good games from them in the past, but they have not been able to stay consistent at all. SK Ton should have hit those shots as well and got that knockover onto DRS, but wasn't quite able to land that there. Mad Bulls did send their way down the hillside. They've got two players still up top, though, watching on oversight. S2G looking to take down these final members from Nygma Galaxy. You can see the rest of the Mad Bulls players inside the tree line. Not a bad position to play at the moment. Freak, though, finds a shot down towards I8. In the meantime, LGD are creeping up towards I8 spot underneath them. And R8 still taking it to the guys from Box Gaming who are having a horrible time. And why not? Box Gaming do finally go down and R8 pick up more elimination points at this stage. Up to 70 total. Up to five eliminations and they start to ring the valley with bullets. Infinity also looking out to Nygma Galaxy with their last player, Nuzi. Taking shots over towards Freak. Finds one and two of them on their descent. Just Lord remaining. And Nuzi nearly gets the whole banana, but instead it's S2G. who are able to claim the bunch. Now just Mad Balls alive. Towards that bottom bracket of the NAR8, of course. They're having a really good game so far. They did lose Monkey as LGD were able to spot him on his rotate down in the vehicle. It was the only option they had available to them. Skillsers behind the tree. I8 has oversight towards it. Does get away. They're on the barest edge at the moment. A great position for I8 in this game. Again, one back towards them from their engagement between them and Budadam. Again, it doesn't always work out in their favor, but that's Hamzy G. Taking down UZM. He's in a bad spot as well. Could get flushed here. Certainly, certainly could. At the moment, Acorn XIA on the tables, they're in a fairly safe position. Unlikely that they drop all the way down to the elimination bracket and unlikely that they're able to strike out towards the top. So it is just about keeping on going and staying fairly consistent. Not too much to worry about for them, but for Mad Bulls, the oh, teams they're fighting off against, me. it is so much harder. S2G, they really want to catch LDG, LGD after that last game and will be putting in the work to do it. But LGD have their shift on as well after their hot drop onto Influence. Kevin, they've been able to stay alive. Five eliminations now, but they have to get a little bit closer to the center.
Brest 2G, they've got a great spot right now. Oversight over towards Mad Bulls, who are most likely the next to go down within this circle. It's going to be incredibly hard for them to get across the fields. And with that, S2G sent the player across to try and get the side swipe onto them with Silas. For Mad Bulls, top four would be ideal at this point in time. You need those points, ideally. DRS takes shots, Giante goes down. And for Mad Bulls, time is not on their side. With 15 seconds, they will have to move. The circling closes on them, and S2G have clear sights towards their side of the map. ID7, just pop in where he can. LGD chiming in onto the Mad Bulls, cutting one down and getting flushes as well, adding to those points totals. But they'll have to move further. Mad Bulls spotted. Hamzy G. He knows this player is looking for it. Excellent Damn. headshot coming through from Hamzy. Whips Zerich back. And leaves the Mad Bulls at one. Even if they go for that res, it's going to be really, really dangerous. LGD playing on this ridge side. Just need to squeak further forwards if they can. Effect spotted. You've got to imagine he doesn't last too long. That comes from Hamzy to pick it up. Seven eliminations for S2G. Six for LGD. This is really, really close for that top bubble. I mean, our rate are even finding points here in this game. Eight eliminations with three still alive in a fairly decent spot for themselves. Mad Bulls going down in sixth place. Not ideal for them, but better than nothing with a lot of teams around that area of the bracket going down before them. It will at least be a somewhat of a net positive on their side. But again, top five is where the points really start to raise up. Was it going down in sixth? It's not good for them. DRS falling oh. to I8. Continuing to hold on to this position with four limits now found for DRS, but I8 up to seven. Some real sweeps coming on through here. We've had high counts from LGD, from S2G, and now from Aegon R8. Aegon I8 and R8, in fact. Everybody on high elimination counts left in this final circle. Everyone's got that bolstered confidence. That can come from getting those streaks into the game. S2G, though, the only team with four. LGD currently in a really good spot, honestly, for themselves. Yes, the circle moves away from them, but a lot of these teams are going to have to come down from the high ground, and LGD will just be waiting for them to take shots. It will all rely on how quickly LGD can find these shots towards them. Oh, no. Chuck C makes a terrible mistake. Trying to get onto the high ground, out of the way of the circle. And now Suki, as well as MVM, have to battle against these two players from S2G who have ideal positions to take them down. S2G have a really solid 2-2 split. They've got sights onto both positions here. Silas and Hamzy is such a brutal spot for them. And look at this sight line that Kelsey is able to exert. Along with Ray Z over on this hillside. There is no way that people can move without S2G knowing about it. The question is, where does the circle go next? Rest of S2G coming back to try and support. There's some S2G over towards LGD's spot on that side. R8 shots over towards R8. This this where it ends for R8. Prestige down. ID7 taking a lot of damage, suffering heavily. There is a crossfire there coming through from SK Tom, but it is swept aside. However, damage was done. R8 pick up another point. Ten of limbs, fourth place. Some of the best performance we've seen so far from the squad. But we're back on board with S2G and LGD. The battle for the third place spot. Blank, both teams alive deep into this circle. LGD after a hot dropping influence came in early on with two players alive. And now Aegon I8 looking to take shots out that way as well. 11 eliminations for the squad. And down the hill, the bullets will fall. Hamzy. Takes LGD out of the mix, leaves them as a four versus two. The final circle yet to close. We'll start moving in on them. Kelsey, it's going to be difficult for him to get back up without exposing his position to I8. So more than likely, this will be a 3v4 unless Kelsey can make something magical happen. Spotting the positions where it's likely for R8 to be. Taking those shots, pre-firing inwards. Shots come out, but that's Hamzy G moving up the coast side. On this ridge, finds Wood, looks for one more in Blade, and he's terrified. He's shaking. Those boots are all a quiver. Blade will not be able to find even the one. S2G 
control Miramar perfectly. What a way to strike out for the top of the tables. Unfortunately for them, LGD stayed alive very, very late. Got a high elimination count as well. So that gap, I think it was 10 points at the start of the game, will be difficult to close. It might have been shrunk though, and it's all to play for moving into the last four games of this group stage. Group Red really up for grabs for those finals qualification spots.